my name is Katie Reisinga, and I'm the baptism coordinator at St. Matthew. I'm also a second grade catechist in the PSR program, so hi to all my second graders, I miss you. But this video is not just for children or for families with young children, it's for all of us. As you know, we're coming up to Holy Week, the most special, solemn time of our church year. And yet we're not going to be able to gather at St. Matthew for the masses and traditions that we're used to. So we want to help you with this video to plan and prepare to celebrate a very blessed Holy Week in your homes. We will be able to watch through media the services at the Vatican and in the diocese and I believe some from St. Matthew as well. And we're going to post a lot of resources and links online to help you. But now is the time for us to plan and think about how we can enter into Holy Week in a different way this year, at home in our domestic churches. I know that each of our families has different ways that we pray, different places that we pray. Maybe you have a prayer space, a table, or a shelf, or your dining room table. But we'd like you to think about how it is that you set the environment in your home to help you be able to enter more deeply into prayer. Hopefully you can carve out some little space and in some way prepare your home for Holy Week. I think the first thing you can think about is just doing some cleaning, some clearing out. And at this point in Lent, it can mean putting away some sacred images that you have or statues or other things that you usually use for prayer around your home or veiling them. You can just take a a piece of purple cloth or dark cloth, whatever you have, and veil or cover, just like we do at church, cover some of those images, just to remind us that we're in a waiting period, that we're in the desert with Jesus, journeying with him on the way to the cross. And then those can be removed at Easter. Palm Sunday, this Sunday will be Palm Sunday. We won't be able to go to St. Matthew and get palms. Many people are planning to post a palm branch or some kind of green branch on their doorways or the word Hosanna to spread that joy to commemorate Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem to sing Hosanna on that day you can print out a coloring page or make a poster or I made this banner down in the front of the table here somehow find a way to proclaim Hosanna on Palm Sunday the first part of Holy Week can be dedicated to doing some baking, some cleaning, maybe just keeping things very simple with a simple candle in your prayer space, just reminding us that we're in that time of waiting. We want to really try to resist the pressure to get into the Easter bunny and uh, Easter baskets and, and that kind of side of celebrating Easter because we don't want to miss out on the special holy celebration of Holy Week. Once we get to Holy Thursday, we enter into the Holy Triduum. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Saturday, leading up to the Easter Vigil. Holy Thursday is an opportunity to really enter into the story of Jesus suffering uh, and dying for us. The stories and rituals of Holy Thursday are so beautiful. What I would suggest is that you take your time with the readings from the Gospels about what happened as Jesus and his friends gathered to celebrate the Passover meal. If you have small children, you can use a children's Bible or a, an Easter story book that presents the story. Uh, but I suggest that you break the story up a little bit and take your time savoring each part of the story. So Holy Thursday is a wonderful opportunity to have a really special dinner, a time to get out the china and the special dishes, make you can make lamb as the Passover meal would have had. In our house, we usually do like roast beef or a roast chicken and have a really, we prepare a really nice meal for that evening. When we enter the dining room though, before we eat, we have celebrated the ritual of the washing of the feet. That story from Holy Thursday, where Jesus did the work of what a servant would have done for the people when they came in off of the dusty roads. Jesus washed the disciples' feet and said, as I have done, you must do. So in that, he instituted the priesthood, the holy priesthood. So we want to pray for our priests 
and we want to follow Jesus' example and remind each other that we are here to serve one another and to show our love in humble, simple ways. So we go around and we take turns washing each other's feet. We can wash, we've certainly washed our hands a lot. And after the washing of the feet, we'll make sure we wash our hands really, really well before we sit down to dinner. So then, so read that part of the story and enter into that. And then move on to dinner. And during dinner, you can talk about what exactly the disciples were doing, what the Passover meal was. Don't be afraid. If your children ask questions, if you don't know about it, look it up. Google, learn about what a special meal this was and about how significant it was that Jesus took the bread and broke it and said, do this, when you eat this, remember me. And he took the wine and said, when you drink this, remember me. That was the institution of the Holy Eucharist. And right now we are longing to receive communion. And so we can offer that longing um, to Jesus as a prayer and tell him how much we're looking forward to receiving him in the Eucharist again soon. So definitely have wonderful bread, bake some bread. You can bake unleavened bread, have wine or sparkling juice, a special drink, and talk about that together and enter into that together. After the meal, Jesus and his friends went to the garden of Gethsemane and Jesus asked his friends to stay with him and to watch and pray with him. So read that part of the story after dinner and go, if it's nice weather, you can go outside on the porch or in the yard or in your living room or your place of prayer and just sit and be still and pray in silence together. Just watch and pray in darkness and in silence together. When we get to Good Friday, we remember Jesus carrying the cross for us. The hours between 12 and 3 are certainly the most holy hours of that day, and, and many people keep that those hours in darkness and in silence. We certainly want to tune into one of the services that we can watch and or pray the Stations of the Cross, the Sorrowful Mysteries of the Rosary. There are so many ways we can enter in. We can venerate the cross just as we do at the church service you can you know pick a crucifix or cross in your home and perhaps on good friday just on your prayer table or your prayer space have a simple setup with the crucifix and a candle and you can come and venerate and kiss the feet of jesus and and venerate the cross and enter into that with him um, on Good Friday, especially when my children were little, we would post the Stations of the Cross around the house. Um, you know, you can print off pictures of them and post them at different places around the house or the yard. Perhaps put a little tea light uh, along with it and actually journey with Jesus. Walk along that road and listen and pray. You can watch the Stations of the Cross on Formed um, and listen to it or pray it out of many different books or printouts. For children, oftentimes, you can help them find items. They can draw the stations or find items. Um, there are kits available. You can make your own where every time we pray that Jesus falls, you can have them hold a Band-Aid, give them a Band-Aid, um, the nails when he's nailed to the cross, or, or a small cross they can hold on to. Just different ways that we can enter in um, to that story more deeply together. And then finally, on Holy Saturday, we may find ourselves busy with baking and cleaning. Again, we have to try to resist that urge um, to welcome the Easter Bunny and all of those things too early. It's still a day of waiting. It's a day of pondering and wondering what would the world be like with Jesus in the tomb? And I think this year we can relate to that maybe a little bit better than other years. And just try to keep a quiet, calm environment in your home. Next week, we're going to post a, another Facebook Alive video about how to make a Paschal candle for your home. The great Easter candle that's lit at sundown, at, when darkness falls on Holy Saturday night, we can make one for our homes for praying in our domestic church. So we'll have another video about what all the symbols on the candle mean, but you may want to practice or try to prepare finding some materials for decorating a candle, or even if you made a paper one, but decorating some kind of candle in your home. We'll have that video posted next week. Um, 
So choose, think about how you can set a holy environment in your home. It won't be perfect. None of us have a perfect prayer life and perfect environment in our home. But what little things can you do and can you plan to make the celebration extra holy? And I would think about meals. Many people have hot cross buns on Good Friday, special meal on Holy Thursday. There are also some things posted where, um, especially with kids, you can have symbolic foods on these days um, that help them enter into the story. Make sure you're reading the word, reading that story, following Jesus along. Um, there are crafts also to keep kids busy and learning about Holy Week. If your kids are really young, you can do something simple where there's just one symbol for each day, for each of the significant events um, in Holy Week. So we will post all these things on our website. Thank you for watching. Please count on the prayers and support of all the parish staff at St. Matthew. We're working hard uh, to try to help you have the resources you need to keep on this sacred and holy journey. Feel free to reach out to us if we can pray in a special way or help you in any way. We hope you have a very blessed Holy Week.